Hey guys, my name is Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the Briggs book tag, which is a wonderful book tag based off of the Myers-Briggs personality types. I will link the original tag down below as well as the document for questions and all that jazz. If you've never heard of the Myers-Briggs test, basically it's a personality test that will then give you a personality type based on four different letters and because of that there are 16 different types in total. According to the test, I am an ENTP, which means that I am the debater. There are various levels of like how serious people take these kinds of things. I don't take it crazy seriously. I don't think that this is a um, mystical ball to see into my future or to look deeply into my soul. But the debater is a fairly good fit for my personality type. So the first thing I'm going to do is answer the questions based on each individual letter. I've just got them on my phone down here because I can't remember them. So extrovert, being alone has its perks but what's the point of a good book if it can't be shared? What are three all-time favourite books you would love everybody to read and talk about? First one I haven't really spoken crazy amount about on my channel but but it is The Seasons of the Witch by Natasha Mustert. This is a magical realism slash psychic kind of book, but it is also grounded in a lot of reality and a lot of real practical ideas. So if that sounds a bit woo, it's not a woo book as such. Uh, it's really at its heart a thriller and a bit of a murder mystery. And the thing that I love about it the most is I think that the characters are in insanely insanely strong so i think the main character is called david and he is trying to work out who has murdered this boy and the two main suspects are two sisters and it's about him getting closer to these sisters to try and find out who murdered them like who's the murderer but in doing so he kind of gets a bit ensnared into their web it's wonderful it's rich it's evocative it's got some really interesting information about memory which is very cool and generally it's very very awesome uh oh we have my favorite <laughs> that i think everybody knows is my favorite on this channel right now that is the gargoyle by andrew davidson this is a so this book follows the story of a man who at the very beginning of the book has a suffers a very very bad car accident and is very badly burned and when he is recovering in hospital he meets a woman who is another patient who claims that they have known each other in a past life and that they were romantically involved and then the story from there is kind of a mixture of the modern day timeline and then their historical timeline of their life together it's a mix of as i said historical fiction but there's also um, a lot of commentary on like religion and psychology and science and spirituality in there and i think it's just an absolutely wonderful book that just goes into so much detail also it goes into loads of detail about how you treat burns that i found absolutely fascinating and then i'm trying to pick ones that people don't really talk about too much rather than just like really well-known books no, sorry, I'm gonna have to do it. <laughs> My last one is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Again, I mention this book all the time on the channel. It's very popular, very well known. If you haven't heard about it already, where have you been? But basically, it's a dystopian fiction which follows various different characters and kind of little vignettes that all tie together, which is looking at a world where a flu has wiped out 99.9% .9 of the population. And it's about that happening, but also 20 years on. It's wonderful, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. I adore it, read it. Okay, my next letter is N, and that is for intuition, because um, introvert, extrovert, the I has already been taken, so intuition. Some books are meant to be understood, and others are meant to be explored. What book or character stands out for an idea that is deeply meaningful for you? Should have looked at these questions before I started filming. Do not have any ideas. One I think that has been really meaningful for me is The Four Temperaments by uh, Yonah McDonough never actually said her name out loud. This is a story of a ballet dancer who basically, um, it's, it's at its heart kind of a contemporary family love story as such. She goes into a family and pretty much ruins it. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that I think is really important to her, the, the character's name is Ginny, is Ginny has a work ethic that I totally respect and get. She is all consumed by her love for ballet and she is very, very dedicated to the point that when she starts feeling these emotions for this married man that then that's how the story progresses. She's very surprised to find that she could care about something else so much. Um, and I think that I definitely have a bit of a tunnel vision in my life about really focusing and obsessing over things. So I respect Ginny's dedication, but I also respect her ability to recognize that there is more to life than just your passion. It's also just a wonderful family drama, if you do want to check it out. Which is strange, because I don't normally like family dramas. Right, uh, I'm in T for thinking. Non-fiction for some can seem tedious, but where would we be without our, the truths of our world? What book, text or reading material have you found yourself referring to when in need of real world answers? Ooh, I love non-fiction. 
talked about numerous times on this channel before, but it would have to be the pig that wanted to be eaten and 99 other thought experiments. So for those of you who don't know, I did a degree in philosophy, and this is a collection of thought experiments, which is what philosophers use to ponder the big questions of the world that you can't actually test in a physical, actual experiment, because it would be either deeply unethical or just scientifically impossible. I think that this will probably be the book that I refer back to the most, because I still, even though I've technically finished my degree several years ago and I've not continued with my studies at all, they are still questions that I think are very interesting and I think do impact our world quite a lot. This book covers everything from like um, metaphysics, looking at our physical world, does it exist, how do we experience it, through to things like ethics and political philosophy which have far more real world applications which are very very interesting so I think this is a wonderful book for anybody who doesn't really know where to start with philosophy but also it's a wonderful book if you just like questioning stuff. And then my last letter is P, which is perceiving. TBRs are fun to construct and meant to be destroyed. Do you stick to the list or mix it up every now and then? What book, what's a book you've put down that you want to pick back up but just haven't been in the mood for? <sighs> TBRs, TBRs. I'm a big mood reader but I am trying to get a little bit more of a handle on my reading habits and really kind of direct them a little bit more. I feel like I'm trying to lead a puppy dog down like a busy interesting street like focus brain you can do this. Um, at the moment I make seasonal TBRs and I'm relatively good at sticking to them but they do give me the room to like read other things. I'm thinking about swapping to monthly just because I've got some challenge ideas coming up and they work best over a monthly context and it does mean that you get to books which maybe languish on your shelves a little bit longer. On the note of books that I want to pick up again that I haven't really been in the mood for there is one that immediately jumps to mind. That's Sapiens by Yuval Harari... Yuval? Noah. You. Yuval Noah Harari. Sorry, I just had to like look at the other one on the shelf. This is a non-fiction which literally looks at kind of the history of humanity going all the way back to Neanderthal time and is looking at the big revolutions from like a much more macro scale. I started reading this now 18 months ago, got about two, halfway through, maybe a third, put it down, then left it too long, now kind of need to restart the whole thing. I've had it on like multiple TBRs and still haven't got around to it and I think I've now just scared myself and hyped it up so I need to get over this and read this book because it's supposed to be so good and I have another one on my shelf from him which I can't really read until I've done Sapien because they kind of like lead on from each other so I just need to flip and read it already like it's getting absurd also American Gods by Neil Gaiman never actually one Okay, so those are my four letters, but then there is actually a question linked to my entire profile. So ENTPs are debaters, which means that we really like kind of questioning and querying and pondering the life's mysteries, occasionally in a way that can offend or bother people because you're not really bothered by people's emotions in an underlying context, you're more interested in the discussion rather than who's discussing it, which has got me in trouble a few times before. Famous other ENTPs apparently include Tom Hanks, happy about that one, but also the Joker and Tyrion Lannister. Great, I'm a sociopath. <laughs> I'm clearly not, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. This one actually calls it the visionary, but I have heard it referred to as the debater before. The titles do sometimes change. So ENTP, you're so creative and innovative you don't often, if ever, find the need to be controlled. Yeah, true that. What bookish question would you add to this list that you find would find important to know? That's cool. The lack of control thing, that, yes, that's the thing for us. Okay, so what bookish question would I want to add? One thing I always find really interesting is kind of what do people think, rather than what genre is people's favorite, but what actual features of a book do you think make it kind of a favorite for you? So for example, do you like flashbacks or do you like multiple point of views or do you find um, multiple timelines really irritating? Are you somebody who likes short chapters or long chapters? Do you like a, a lot of dialogue? Because I think actually, for me, because I read from such a wide range of genres, I think that that makes far more of an impact on whether I'm going to enjoy a book or not, rather than the genre itself. And I think that people do will have these like unconscious biases towards certain styles of writing, but it's not something we really talk about, but that would make more sense when recommending a book. Like if I give you a plot summary and then be like, oh, it's magical realism, that could mean anything. Whereas if I told you like, oh, cool, this is a rough plot, but it has like three points of view and really long chapters and um, the dialogue's a bit clunky, that might give you a bit more of an idea. Um, so I guess maybe that, that might be something that we like should talk about more on booktube. I don't really know. Uh, that was a bit of a strange question. Right, that is it for me. I tag everyone, the world. Let me know. Uh, if you've not done the Myers-Briggs 
test yet you can don't pay for it there's tons of paid ones out there you don't need to i'll link it down below um do you buy into personality types and personality tests i don't know if it's a bit like your hogwarts house or your um star sign please don't at me if you're like super into astrology but for me personally there is a certain element of truth to these but i also think that uh the human experience is far more nuanced than these give it credit for and trying to use these to extrapolate out to like how we should live or what we're like in relationships or what we're like in a job or things like that i think uh, does a disservice to the just variety and diversity in the world so yeah so that's it from me <laughs> um i've got to go now it's been wonderful chatting have a wonderful reading week if you enjoyed this then please do feel free to uh, hit the subscribe button or just check out more of my videos like i'm really not bothered if you subscribe or not guys but just watch stuff uh, i always link down below a few more videos that i think might interest people so do feel free to check that out and i will chat to you soon bye guys